Um, okay, here's one. Uh, keen to know the strategy behind the waterfront. What prompted the growth in this part of the city and investment in accommodation? And we just... The, is the new accommodation open yet? Or it just certainly the, is. It is? Okay. It's been fun to watch that go up. So, so the accommodation's ahead of time. So the, the top four... The bottom four floors... Um, it's 141. There's 402 all up, and the bottom floors were finished ahead of T1, day one. So we said, what should we do? I said, well, look, maybe. So anyway, one of the bright spots said, well, why don't we just offer them 10% off? And I said, it'd be dusty, it'd be terrible. And all the, you know, my age in the room said, oh, it'd be shocking, nobody's going to like <laughs> 100% of students said, yep, we're in. 10% <laughs> off, you know, just 10% to spend in the town, so everybody wins. But um, so that, so why, why the waterfront? Well, it was Joan Kerner, not mm. Jeff Kerner. It was Joan Kerner who gave the waterfront to the university. Then she loses the election. Then Jeff Kerner came down and did, here it is, $37 million of our own money later, having to fix it up because there was no roof, et cetera. Um, we filled the building. Um, we're a university for Geelong. Yeah. Technically, we should have made that. We should have sold it, moved to Warm Ponds, and been a nice, quiet, sleepy regional university. But we're the university for Geelong, and Geelong's here. You know, this is part of Geelong. So all, so we moved all our business and all our law from Warm Ponds here, and we left nursing here because of the hospitals. The hospitals are just here. The nurses work long hours. They often have yeah. their course. Then they're on duty. 20 minutes later, just down the road, and they're running to get there. So we left nursing and OT here um, and then started to expand. We brought down a lot of our ITs here now. Um, that's, you know, we do a lot of stuff with our, all our big, smart IT developer guys. The whole development thing for Deacon Digital, Deacon Genie, is all here now because this is where all the expertise is, yep. you know, which is, you know, it's not a Burwood, it's here. So that's been useful. I also thought it was an obligation to the town, is to make it beautiful. Could we do things? Mm. You remember we decided to take all our graduations here. That was a leadership moment. Because um, <laughs> I thought it would, everyone would agree. It was a million dollars to use the Melbourne Convention Centre. And nobody liked it. People used to get lost, yada, yada, yada. Um, it's empty. No one went. So we moved all the graduation ceremonies here. Burwood immediately. You're moving the whole university to Geelong. You don't like us, and I had to try and persuade them. First year, not everybody, not most staff didn't come down. Now they are celebrated events, which are packed out. We have fantastic events, and we use the town yeah. and we warn everybody. <laughs> the first year we didn't, and of course they ran out of everything. And of course graduations and champagne go very much hand in hand. <laughs> Parents will do anything when their children have graduated because finally, you know, it's all over. It's not. They think they're all moving out and going away. They're not, but they, they learn that slowly. Um, and so now we warn everyone that graduations is on, you know, and I was talking to the peer the other day and they love graduations <laughs> because it brings people to the town. Yep. What I think it's done for the town, the number of people that come and say, oh, I didn't know Geelong was this beautiful. Oh, you're new to Victoria. You no, no, no. I was born. You know, I'm a third generation Victorian. Live on North Melbourne. Have never been to Geelong. Yep. And I moan to the city all the time about got to do more publicity in Melbourne. Stop doing all the stuff yeah. overseas. Do it in Melbourne. So that matters. Why have we built that accommodation here? Because a lot of the people who come to Warm Ponds live, uh, come to Waterfront, live on the Warm Ponds accommodation. Yeah. The bus, as you know, is now over 250,000 passenger trips or whatever it is. I see Lisa writing, if don't write that down. It's a heavy number. Yeah. It runs all day and all night. You'll often see the bus. A few little old ladies who live on the warm ponds there who <laughs> come into the town to bet. They get on the bus as well with their handbags. They look like <laughs> students, so we let, it's a private bus just for deacon students and staff. And three precious ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what do you do at Deacon? Oh, you know, I come to Deacon. Oh, yes. Um, Life sciences, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> and so they come up and down, come up and down. And we, we need to build more warm ponds accommodation. But we also thought, this is ridiculous. This is not sustainable. So we decided to test whether we could build accommodation on private land. Well, it's our land, but it's not on a campus, if you know what I mean. So we had to do it slightly differently. And it's been, well, I think it's a brilliant success. The previous mayor says it looks like a fortress. It is a fortress. 
The students, want, the students absolutely love it. So everything in that building, if you get a chance, go and have a look. It's, we're opening it next week, I think. The Minister for Planning is coming down to open it for us. But if you go inside, every room looks down onto this incredible courtyard and you can all see the Yu Yangs. The Yu, honestly, I said to the architects, you got the, you got the Yu Yangs moved, did you, to fit in? <laughs> because the two wings are here and the Yu Yangs are right in the, it is absolute, so it's beautiful. Our students have, they have tiny rooms, but they're in, you know, we've got them back to six with a, with, you know, with the kitchen and a lounge and four showers and four toilets or whatever it is. I can't remember. Mm. Because you don't want them in their rooms just playing with technology. You want them out of their rooms, learning to be good citizens, etc. Yeah. So it's a different way. Um, the first 141 have been fantastic. You'll watch them pop out at 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. You'll see them wandering around, just coming back from the gym, just going to something. They are, you know, the under 25s are an interesting brand of people, I can tell you that. Why they are up at 3 o'clock and can't go to lectures at 10, completely beyond me. But probably I've forgotten and I've got too old. But that's our first attempt. We might do another set because it's been useful and this campus here is growing very, very fast, mm. particularly our move to bring some internationals, international students into the city. We have a lot of Indian students, as you know, Master Engineering at, at Geelong is a very, very popular course for, for Indian students, as is IT. Our Chinese students are business-oriented normally. And if I had to say one thing about the town, we have to have people eating after 9.30, you know, so we can get that Singaporean, yeah. Malaysian, Chinese yeah. who eat, who often eat early but then do things late. And so we have to get some of that going. I mean, and we haven't quite got that jagged against Melbourne.